What if the key to finding gold wasn't hidden, but laying right beneath your feet in plain sight? Not gold itself, but the rocks that always lead to it. Long before a single nugget glistens under the pan or a detector beeps with excitement, nature whispers. And those whispers often come from rocks, not flashy, not metallic, but rugged geological messengers that consistently show up where gold hides. These rocks don't just suggest possibility, they scream gold is near. Yet most people pass them by. Today we're peeling back the Earth's crust and reading the ancient script etched in stone. If you've ever dreamed of prospecting gold without a map, this guide is your compass. 1. Quartz, the gateway vein. It's often milky, sometimes clear, occasionally streaked with iron or fractures. Quartz isn't rare, but its relationship with gold is sacred. Quartz veins are Earth's pressure lines formed by hydrothermal fluids pushing through fissures. As they cool, quartz crystallizes, and if conditions were right, gold settled in too. That's why so many gold-bearing areas, from California's mother load to Western Australia, are riddled with quartz, especially the kind with iron-stained fractures. The redder the veins, the greater the chance you're near something special. But beware, not all quartz is created equal. Gold doesn't travel alone. It chooses quartz as a hiding place when the chemistry matches. That's why prospectors often break open even the ugliest quartz, because sometimes inside the dullest shell lies visible gold. Two, iron-stained rocks, nature's highlighter pen. What's rusty, oxidized, and usually ignored? Iron-stained rocks. These surfaces, painted red, orange, or deep brown by the oxidation of iron minerals like pyrite or magnetite, are geological beacons. They're not the gold, but they highlight the hydrothermal activity that often brings gold along. Imagine this. Gold often forms in the same system that heats up and mobilizes iron-rich fluids. So where iron has bled into the rocks, gold might have tagged along. The trick is to follow the oxidation zone. It's nature's way of saying, there's been heat, pressure, and mineral movement here. All ingredients for gold deposition. Three, schist, the ancient host. Schist may not look impressive. It's flaky, foliated, and sometimes sparkles due to mica. But this metamorphic rock has hosted gold deposits for millennia. In Ethiopia, in Canada, in Australia, it's there. Gold is often found in the creases, faults, and fractures of schist, trapped as the rock shifted and morphed over time. Its layers act like geological books, each page a history of heat and pressure. And when molten gold-bearing fluids pushed through, schist became a natural archive of the metal's presence. If you're exploring ancient mountain belts and find weathered schist, it might just be worth investigating deeper. 4. Serpentinite, the silent indicator. A greenish, slick rock that looks like snakeskin, serpentinite is one of the most underestimated gold indicators in the field. It forms deep in the earth and often occurs near fault zones, prime paths for hydrothermal gold-bearing fluids. In fact, serpentinite doesn't just appear randomly, it's tied to tectonic activity, which is also responsible for many rich gold zones. Places like California's Sierra Nevada foothills are known for serpentinite-rich zones. And guess what they also hold? Massive quartz veins and gold. Look for serpentinite in older terrains where faults cross-cut the terrain. It may not carry gold itself, but it's part of the neighborhood where gold likes to live. Five, Gossens, the crust of gold secret. They look like rusted scars on the landscape, reddish, sometimes yellow-brown crusts on top of rocks. These are gossens. They form when sulfide-rich ore bodies near the surface oxidize. And while the sulfides get leached away, something precious sometimes remains trapped underneath. Gold. Historically, some of the world's richest mines, like those in the American Southwest and Western Australia, were discovered by identifying gossens. They're like burnout shells of once rich systems. A gossen doesn't guarantee gold, but it absolutely demands a second look. Scratch below and you may uncover the real story. Six, black sands, the final clue near water. You've probably seen it in gold panning videos, that heavy dark layer at the bottom of the pan, black sand, made mostly of magnetite and other heavy minerals. Black sands signal a riverbed or 
stream channel where heavier elements settle. And gold loves this company. While black sands aren't rocks per se, they represent the final sorting zone, where the light is carried away in the dense remains. If black sand shows up in quantity, keep going. Check upstream, scan the banks, test nearby rocks, because black sand is the sedimentary whisper that gold might just be within reach. Seven, rhyolite, the volcanic stage for gold's arrival. Rhyolite is a fine-grained volcanic rock, often light-colored, sometimes with visible crystals. Why does it matter? Because in many volcanic belts, rhyolite is the platform on which gold-bearing systems emerge. These rocks often hold epithermal gold deposits, formed by hot, mineral-rich waters moving through cracks. If you're in volcanic terrain and come across rhyolite, especially with quartz veining or iron staining, it's time to investigate. Many low sulfidation gold deposits ride on rhyolite's back. The gold might be microscopic, but it's still there, hiding in the gaps and grains. But we're not done. We'll go deeper into rocks that don't just indicate gold, but sometimes host it invisibly. From granite secrets to the unexpected clues of conglomerates, we'll explore the subtle signs and hidden hints that seasoned prospectors never ignore. Because when it comes to finding gold, nature always leaves a trail. You've just scratched the surface of Earth's oldest treasure map. The rocks don't lie, they whisper. And if you know how to listen, they'll guide you to where gold still waits, untouched. These are the stones seasoned prospectors chase when the obvious signs disappear. Eight, conglomerates, nature's gold trap. Imagine ancient riverbeds long turned to stone. Conglomerates are exactly that, cemented gravels and pebbles fused by pressure and time. And in many cases, they've locked away alluvial gold within them. The most famous example, the Witwaters Rand Basin in South Africa, source of over 40% of all the gold ever mined on earth. And it's entirely hosted in conglomerate rock. Look for rounded pebbles bound by sandy or quartz-rich matrix. If you're in a gold-producing region and spot conglomerate outcrops, test them. Some may still carry fine gold, trapped in the layers where water once flowed. Nine, greenstone belts, Earth's ancient gold reservoirs. Greenstone belts aren't single rocks, but ancient volcanic and sedimentary suites metamorphosed over billions of years. These belts stretch across parts of Canada, Australia, and Africa and many of them are laced with gold. The rocks here are dark, sometimes chlorite rich, and often heavily deformed by tectonic forces. Gold forms here not by chance, but because of the deep heat, pressure, and mineral flows that dominated Earth's earliest history. If you're hunting in terrains older than two billion years, and you come across greenstone, especially interlayered with quartz or schist, you've stepped into some of Earth's richest historical gold zones. 10. Granite, the invisible partner. Granite isn't usually the star of the show. It's intrusive, speckled, and hard. But granite often plays a critical role in gold's formation. Why? Because it's a heat engine. Granite intrusions heat up surrounding rock, driving hydrothermal fluids that carry gold. Gold rarely forms in granite, but close to its borders. That's another story. The contact zone, where granite meets surrounding rocks is where fluids move, faults intersect, and mineralization thrives. So if you're trekking across granite country, don't dismiss it. Map the contact zones. Look for quartz veining and iron staining near granite sediment boundaries. That's where the magic may begin. 11. Mica Schist, the glittering mask. With its reflective sheen, mica schist can easily trick the eye but beneath its sparkle lies more than vanity. Mica schist often hosts narrow quartz veins rich in minerals, including gold, particularly in regions with historical metamorphic belts, like the Appalachian Range or parts of the Alps. Mica schist plays host to some of the finest pocket gold discoveries. But here's the trick. Don't be fooled by mica's glitter. Use a magnifier. Look for needle-like crystals or minute yellow flakes embedded in quartz within the schist. Mica may mask it, but gold doesn't hide forever. 12. Dolerite and diorite dikes, the vertical vessels. These fine to medium grained intrusive rocks are often found in vertical dikes, sheets cutting through older rocks. Gold doesn't form in dolerite or diorite themselves, but these formations often act as conduits for hydrothermal fluids. 
In parts of Ghana, Brazil, and Canada, dolerite dikes are closely associated with gold mineralization. When a gold-bearing fluid moves, it follows the cracks, and these dikes are the perfect host for fractures. If you're prospecting and you see a dolerite sheet or diorite dike intersecting quartz or iron stain zones, test the contact. That's where gold may have pooled. 13. Pyrite, fool's gold, real gold's companion. The shiny, brassy mineral often dismissed as fool's gold might just be your smartest lead. While pyrite itself isn't gold, it often grows in the same conditions and even carries microscopic gold within its crystal structure. Especially in sulfide-rich zones, testing pyrite samples can reveal invisible gold content through fire assays or crushing and panning. In Nevada and Peru, some mines extract gold directly from pyrite-rich ores. The lesson? Don't ignore it. Where there's pyrite, gold is often a silent partner, riding just beneath the surface. Gold is elusive, but it's never alone. It leaves footprints. It gathers friends, rocks, minerals, faults, and signs that reveal its path. It's up to you to notice them. So the next time you walk a dry creek bed or scan a weathered slope, ask not where the gold is hiding, but what signs it's left behind. Quartz doesn't form in isolation. Schist fractures for a reason. Iron stains tell a history of water and heat. If you see the clues, follow them. Because gold doesn't just sparkle, it speaks. At EGS Pro, we believe Earth holds endless secrets and you've just learned how to listen to one of its oldest voices, rocks. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and hit the bell for more untold truths beneath your feet. Gold doesn't hide from the wise, it waits. So pick up your compass, grab your pan, and let the rocks lead you.